Ladies and gents, greetings. Thank you for tuning into First Light Cloud Exchange, your cloud solution center. Today, we invited one of our premier partners, Thrive, and we have Mr. Michael Ditz from Thrive Communications to discuss cybersecurity. As you may already know that cybersecurity, email phishing, ransomware, zero trust network, these are big words, big terms today in the industry. And there's a lot of confusion around it. Uh, we brought in Mr. Dates to clear up some confusion and show you how Thrive can help you secure your network. Michael, thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you again. You as well. So let's discuss security. First of all, why Thrive? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, there's a lot of solutions out there. The customers can go, they can go online, they can call thousands of different companies and buy a variety of, of cybersecurity tools, gadgets, and services. The reason why customers choose Thrive is because we're a true end-to-end -end provider of cybersecurity, outsourced IT, and cloud solutions, meaning that we can not just provide a single point solution, which we can provide, if they know they just need that one thing, we're happy to provide that one thing they know they need, maybe SOC, SIM, EDR, MFA. I think that's enough acronyms for now. Well, right? a lot of people are already <laughs> scratching their heads. What do you mean by all that? But I'm right? sure we'll come to it we, in we, a bit. we will, we will. But if somebody knows there's some specific solution that they need, we're happy to provide it. But where we find the biggest differentiator, the biggest value is two things. First, Helping customers understand just what are the gaps, yep. right? I mean, a lot of people think they're secure, right? And a lot of people find out the hard way that they're not. I want to add a little something to that. I don't think a lot of people even know that they do not have the security that they really need. I would agree. They yes. think they do. Everyone thinks they do, right? Everyone, you know, it's, it's funny. You know, I, I use the example of, you know, if you ask somebody, you know, could you be healthier? Yeah, most people say, yeah, I could be healthier. I could lose five pounds. I could eat a little bit less. I could do that. Everyone says, but you, you ask people about cyber, you'll get a, you, you get that kind of, well, yeah, yeah I, think, I think I'm good, right? But there's always that little bit of, you know, trepidation. They're not really sure. So that's the first thing is just understanding that there's a problem. And a lot of people don't know where that problem is. And to elaborate on that, a lot of people, a lot of businesses uh, in, in today's marketplace already have an IT staff. They have an IT manager. And when we approach them, they already say, well, I ha already have my IT, IT manager. He's responsible for everything. He's managing everything. However, the landscape has changed significantly today. There's lots of threats out there. There's a new attack every day. I don't have to tell you that. Uh, plus, the government, uh, local and uh, uh, state governments are coming up with a lot of regulations that they may not be even aware of, let alone be in compliance. So these are the issues that we are seeing when we are out in the field. Yeah, we're seeing more and more, uh, you know, the, if you go back through compliance and security frameworks, it was really the financial services that were first, right? Money's at stake, got to protect the money, right? Correct. Then it was healthcare. Now you would think lives are more important than money. But apparently <laughs> in cybersecurity, it goes the other way. So it was money and then it was healthcare, right? So we all HIPAA, PII, right? We all signed those things about our data Correct. and how it can be used and shared this and that. Then we saw legal. Why? Because legal does business with healthcare and financial. So right. we saw, oh, I'd say five to 10 years ago, more law firms were being required to fill out these vendor due diligence questionnaires and show that they were actually secure. Um, what's changed now is that um, really it's been the rise in cyber attacks and rise in ransomware yep. that's caused the cyber insurance companies to pay out more in claims than they collected in dues, which, you know, as we know, right, insurance providers, they are for profit businesses. Absolutely. And they don't lose. So they do they, not like cutting checks. They do not. So what they've done is a couple things. Um, one, they've raised their rates. Yep. So if you buy cyber insurance, you already know your rates are higher than they were before. Second thing is they have a, a minimum requirements that you have to have in place in order to just maintain insurance. So we're seeing these questionnaires come out. And, and by the way, it's beyond the phase of just putting yes, aside from the fact that putting yes and knowing it's wrong would be insurance fraud. I mean, there's always that, right? Um, but they're actually looking in some cases for validation, right? third party yeah. validation to show, yes, I'm not just saying I have these 20 or 30 things. I have them they're being used properly, and they're being monitored. Um, and that's one thing I just want to tag on to what you said before. You know, our role is not to replace the IT director. 
Right. Right. Our role is to be an extension of the IT director. So, so when I'm introduced to a company, there's one I met recently. It's one guy. Mm -hmm. right? And I says, well, do you have security tools? Oh, he listed every acronym I just said. And I asked him, well, who monitors all those tools? He goes, oh, I do it right here. And I says, what about at night? Do you sleep? He goes, yeah, I sleep. I wake up in the morning. I look through all the like, Do you take vacation? Do you ever get sick? Right? We're here to be an extension of that person's IT department. We're here for 24-7, 365. So whereas he's one person running IT for a 200-person company, we're a 1,000-person company with 100 people in our security department, with 50 people in our security operations center, 24-7, 365, four locations, three continents, always watching, always monitoring, always making sure that our customers are safe and secure. And that's a very important factor. What we would like you to know that we are not here asking to replace your IT team, your IT manager. That is certainly not our intention. Um, our goal is to bring in support that gives all that full support to the IT manager. That may be a one person team or it could be a three people team. Uh, a company like Thrive would provide 24 seven, 365 uh, uh, monitoring, management, patching, all of that. So thank you for making that distinction. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the other big differentiator is when you talk about orchestration remediation, I mentioned that before, right? So um, recently I was approached um, through a, um, a partner um, who had a client that was hit with ransomware, 500 person law firm. Um, of course, it came in just before Thanksgiving, because by the way, they do not celebrate Thanksgiving in other parts of the world in case people are not aware of that. So, and the hackers, they know that those are days of rest for us. They know that we're having a Nice glass of wine, some turkey, whatever it might be. They know we're asleep on the couch by 4 p.m. possibly. We don't want to be bothered during the football game at all. We, we'll we, just we, ignore that email. Uh, that, uh, well, that can wait. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so this law firm was hit with ransomware. Um, for one, they thought they were protected. So they had things in place. They had tools. But there's always that one element that gets through, and that's the human firewall. Someone clicked on a link. Now, there's other protections. Do not, do not click on any link that you're not sure of. Please do not do that. This is, this is basic security awareness training. Do not click on links. Uh, but someone clicked the link, and it launched something in the network, and then machines were locked down, and they were hit with ransomware. Um, this, the, and they have an IT staff. And the IT staff spent, it actually happened the day before Thanksgiving, but they spent Wednesday and Thursday on the phone with four different companies because they need to talk to their cloud provider, their security provider, their other security provider, their backup provider, maybe it was five, their DR provider, like all these different companies, which by the way, I mean, trying to get five different companies on the phone on the holiday is no easy task. Yeah. I'm sure you, you've seen in your escalations from time to time. It's not likely to happen. Right. Um, so what, what would the Thrive difference be? Well. Um, if that law firm was a customer of Thrive and we were doing end-to-end -end outsourced IT, so we were doing their cloud, we were doing their backup, their DR, their email security. Now, I don't want to get into that maybe we might have had some better security awareness training and maybe the issue wouldn't have happened in the first place. But putting that aside, let's say somehow it still happened. The customer would have had one person to go to, one company. They wouldn't have had to have five different companies coordinate five different phone calls to get them all to work together to get this customer back to where they need to be. When we're doing end-to-end -end IT solutions for our customers, we include remediation and we're always doing that orchestration across the entire cybersecurity framework. So that's an important uh, point. You're saying that even if a customer were to be with uh, Thrive, they could potentially still get attacked by ransomware. But the, if they are under attack, it's a much better place to be with Thrive than if they were on their own having five different vendors. Completely uh, agree. And there's only, you know, so you, you can be, the threat landscape changes day by day, right? Correct. The reason why you go with an outsourced provider is because you're leveraging us to make those changes to keep you protected because we have people that are trying to stay ahead of the curve, right? Right. We're seeing the issues in cybersecurity across all of our customers. If you're doing it on your own, you're only seeing it through your own keyhole. Correct. Right, versus seeing it on a wider scale. But things can still happen. Somebody clicks a link, somebody plugs in a USB. I mean, there are still things that, that can happen and the network can be infiltrated. But again, it's the nice thing to know is that you have that one source that you can go back to for complete orchestration and remediation should there ever be an issue. From our experience, when we approach a lot of uh, businesses 
in the uh, metro area, the response we get, I just spent three quarter of a million dollars in implementing new switches and I'm, I'm fully secured. But the issue there is you're only as good as when you purchase that, that firewall or when that firewall was, was updated. A lot of things can happen. A lot of things do happen. I'm not even talking about in a, a course of three, four months on a daily basis. What was a threat? What was not a threat yesterday is a huge threat today. And if you do not have the latest and greatest uh, uh, protection on your IT network, you're not prepared to handle that threat. And that's where Thrive comes in. Thrive has a security operations center who are monitoring all, all your hardware, all your uh, uh, traffic in real time. So if there is a threat that just originated, uh, I don't know, maybe in Russia this morning, it's much easier for Thrive to mitigate that threat than what you, you could do in your, uh, on your own. Yeah, Would it just becomes a point of focus. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> IT is challenging, right? You know, whenever I get on the phone with an IT director and they talk about, you know, limited resources, right? I mean, like, right now, we'll talk about cyber. This article came out in Fortune uh, in October. There are 700,000 unfilled jobs in cybersecurity just in the U.S. This, now imagine, you're the VP of IT, CIO, at a 500-person company. At 500 people, you probably have the budget to hire a cyber guy, right? Right. Um, but there's 700,000 open jobs in the U.S. right now. So the first moment you all, hire someone, you train them, you get them all excited, and someone else then comes and picks them up. There you go, right? We were talking about this with one of our key partners. Uh, we we're talking about about them. Um, was Fortinet, right? We love Fort. We're you know we support other technologies, but for the most part, our platform is all based on Fortinet when it comes to managed um, firewalls and our SIM and our EDR. We again, we do support other technologies like Sentinel One. Um, but you know the beautiful thing about buying Fortinet is they give training to all of your employees on Fortinet, which is great. Here's the bad news. As soon as your employees are trained on Fortinet, they're probably being offered a 20, 30% bump in their pay to go someplace else. And we see this at every level. We see it at the lower level, you know, the kind of entry level. We see it at the CISO level. Um, recently, I was approached by a prospective customer. They spent six months searching for a CISO. Um, they hired a person. That person had never been a CISO before. It was the first job with a C in front of his title. And uh, two months later, somebody saw that post on LinkedIn and offered him more money and he was gone. So after an eight month search and whatever money it cost them, yep. they were left exactly where they started. Unfortunately, um, we do have a service, which is a virtual CISO. Um, so for that customer, we really looked at it, not to go too far into one project, but we really looked at it and said, well, for their size, um, they need somebody at the helm. They, I mean, having nobody is, is not, an option. not an option, right? Um, but you know, would it work for 20 or 40 hours a month rather than a full-time employee? Again, going back to everything I said, everything that happened to them. So for the time being, we're going to provide them with a virtual CISO. We'll do that for the next year. Uh, nine months from now, we'll have a conversation. What do you want to do? If they find the right person and they decide they want to discontinue services, great. But for a company that size, 500 to 1,000 employees, they're not financial services. They're not healthcare-ish. But you know, they don't need to have that full-time person and we can, we can certainly fill the gap. And that can also come in very handy for SMB markets, small mm -hmm. to medium-sized businesses. Absolutely. Uh, you may not be a 500 uh, people company, you may be a 50 or 100 people company. You still have the same requirements. You still have the same compliance requirements from the government and et cetera. Uh, let's talk about compliance. Sure. So if a business decides to go in with Thrive, mm -hmm. uh, they're not only getting the best possible uh, 24-7, 365 security, mm -hmm. but now you're also, you can also check all the boxes for compliance. Yeah, so we can help them through our professional services team, which is our, our VC, so we can help them adhere to whatever compliance they need to adhere to, right? So um, we'll do SEC uh, compliance readiness. So in the financial sector, right? We're, we're not the auditors, so okay. we're not doing the audit against it. Um, but what we are doing is making sure that we're looking at all their requirements to make sure that they have those things in place and that they're ready to pass whatever audit they might be that's coming up. Um, another thing that comes up uh, a lot is uh, building against the cyber framework. So now I've asked a lot of customers about their cyber framework. I get a variety of answers. If they know what it is, I get, yes, great. We have a framework that we follow. Um, some people go, what's the framework? 
And uh, <laughs> other customers, which is actually the most common one, is it's usually some form of laughter. And you know, nervous <laughs> laughter. Uh, yeah, ner nervous wouldn't laughter. I wish I was following a cyber framework. <laughs> I know there's a framework out there. Um, so frameworks are things like CIS, uh, NIST, ISO. You hear a bunch of different ones out there. Um, really, it's a set of best practices that have been established for cybersecurity. Right, so we use the CIS 18. It's 18 points with 20, 30, 40 sub points under each point. Sure. Um, but it's all the best, um, best practices around a, a true cybersecurity platform. Um, one of the things we do to help customers understand just where they are yep. um, is we'll do a, a cybersecurity risk assessment where we go into each part of that framework and we completely validate that part of the framework. So we don't just ask you, um, Taz, do you have email security? Oh, yeah, I have email security. Sure. We essentially believe nothing, and we will not- Zero trust. It's, a, it's, it's, it's not meant in that way, but yes, it is a zero trust engagement where we believe nothing you say, and uh, if you tell us you have email security, that's great. Please provide your login. We wanna go in, we wanna make sure it's configured properly, you're using it, all your users have it. And then if we give you, it's, it's the simplest output in the world. It's 18 boxes and it's red, yellow, green. Green is good, yellow is eh, and red is bad. Right? Mm. And then we can go into any one of those boxes and say, well, we gave you a green here, and here is the evidence. It's a validated assessment. We can go back to a screenshot, to a write-up by a security professional that says, I logged in, I checked this, here is my proof. And the same thing goes for a yellow or a red. Um, this is really great to see where you stand, uh, especially as it relates to any compliance that you may have, mm -hmm. right? You can check that box there. Um, if it's uh, a due diligence that you're required to fill out, now you know where you stand. I, I've gotten this from customers in the past that, you know, they'll say, well, I got this questionnaire from my customer. I don't know if I have any of these things, right? So now you have a source of truth to go back to when you have to fill out that documentation. It's also helpful for your cyber insurance as well. But the most important is, I think, is that if you're running the business, and I mean running the business, with the CEO, mm -hmm. CFO, COO, CIO, right? You're on the line in some way, shape, or form. Correct. Knowing the where buck you, stops there. Right. Knowing where you actually stand. Because everyone thinks they're secure until they get hit with, with a ransomware. So attack. how does, let's say someone who does not have, who's still managing everything in-house, mm -hmm. and now they're worried, you know, you wake up and you open the newspaper, there is another huge attack. Now they're worried. Is this what you just explained? There's checklists, there's uh, uh, the, the process of figuring things out. Is that a service that they can take advantage of from uh, Thrive? Yeah, so what we do is we do the cybersecurity risk assessment. Um, we do actually provide all the services that are in the in the uh, the cyber framework, right? So all these 18 points around data protection, backup, recovery, email security, everything that's in there is all part of a cyber framework. And it's, it's all services that Thrive does provide. Now, we didn't make up the framework, right? This framework is done by NIST, ISO, CIS, whatever it might be. So um, it's a standard. It's, it's, it's industry a standard, standard right? We, we didn't make up this standard, right? We follow the standard. But we provide the services that are in there. So what we do is after we do the assessment, we provide the high level, red, yellow, green. Here's your boxes. Here's very, It's a great board-facing document, especially mm -hmm. if there's a good amount of green on it, right? Hey, listen, we hope there's green, right? We're not hoping to see a lot of red. There usually is some red, but you know, we're hoping that you do great, but we're gonna give you the actual evidence to confirm that what you say you have, you know, you say you're secure, you say you bought this, well, you know, did you buy an alarm system but not hook it up to central monitoring, <laughs> right? Like, I, I mean, I, I could have bought an alarm system on Amazon, hooked it up myself, would have been a big, loud horn, but if nobody heard it, right, well, what good exactly. is it, right? So, so it gives you all that data. Then what our professional services team will do is sit down, go through a more detailed report that's more of a technical deep dive into what we found okay. there. You know, the CEO, CFO, board, private equity firm, they're not gonna wanna see all that level of detail, right? right? And it gives you a project plan. So it'll say that this particular item, so let's say that you failed in the area of backup and recovery. Mm -hmm. So you have backup and recovery, but it turns out that it's not working right, you can't recover, whatever it is, you failed it for some reason. So we're gonna tell you the level of importance based on what we say. No, we'll talk to you about that, right? Okay. I don't know why you would feel backup is not important, but we'll talk about it, right? <laughs> yep. So we're gonna keep that one in a red because we know it's very important. Then we're gonna talk about the level of effort that goes into it. 
right? And where does that where does that stand? Is it a red? Is it a yellow? Is it a green? Right? Maybe it's a thing like email security, where you could turn it on very easily, and your email could be secure, right? Using one of the tools that we offer our clients. I mean, then we're going to talk about the cost as well. Now, the people in our professional services team, they're not coming back to the sales team for a quote. They're using market research, general pricing, but you can come back to Thrive and talk to us. We do have something we offer our clients on those risk assessments. If they choose to use us as a provider, mm -hmm. we will actually take part of the cost of the assessment and credit it towards future services. So this is a nice way to work together, but it is not a requirement. So are, even if what you're saying is, uh, I'm going to try to simplify this. Even if there's an upfront cost for this risk assessment test or pen testing, I, I believe it's called in it, the industry. It, pen test is one of the 18. So it's a much broader scope. Oh, okay, it's much broader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even if there's a one-time cost, mm -hmm. after it's done, and if the customer decides to move forward with Thrive, you will basically credit that amount. We'll credit half of the amount back half of toward, the amount. towards their services, yeah. Um, or they can take the blueprint and they can do it themselves. They can go to one of my competitors, right? It's 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 validated data. But to go back to where we started, you were asking about compliance and things like that. That is, things like that is what helps customers actually understand where they're at as it relates to it. And as part of it, we'll help them to match up. So say if they're following, uh, we do it off CIS. If they're following NIST, we'll show them, well, NIST section this lines up to CIS section that. So we're, we're there to help, we're there to be consultative. We'll even go on site for those as well. So it's a true security assessment. And you will also give them a uh, sort of a, uh, a report card that they can take it to their, if they pass it, they can take it to the insurance companies and Correct. actually get insurance. Correct. That's great. This is really very good information. And uh, so how, do, how does one get started? Basically, they will just uh, request a, a stress test and based on that, they either move forward or um, you know, so it's interesting, right? So you've got all these business drivers right now that are they're forcing the conversation. I, I, I know we've said it so many times today already, but one of the biggest ones is with the cyber insurance, mm -hmm. right? So the cyber insurance comes up for renewal, and there's some things you don't need a cybersecurity risk assessment to know. So for example, the questionnaire says, do you have this? Yes, no. If you don't have it, you know you need it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if a customer comes to us and says, I know what I need, Right, I need this, I need this, I'm not happy with my MSP, I'm not happy with this, I know I'm missing this. It's great, we don't have to come in and do a full assessment if you know what you need, right? We'll work with you, we have a very consultative approach when it comes to sales and onboarding. We have a phenomenal solutions architecture team that gets involved, engineer to engineer, they're gonna get in the weeds with you, talk about it, right? We're gonna work with you and your team, right? And come up with a solution for the client, if it's known. Yeah. If it's the unknown. And we get these all the time. You know, it's usually coming from, um, you know, a, a, a C level who's not an IT person. Maybe they lost their IT person because they got offered more money someplace else. Who knows, right? Uh, and they're saying, I just, I don't know. Or I've got this form to fill out with the insurance company. I just don't know. Yep. So we come in in that case with the cyber risk assessment because they need to show the proof, right? Somebody's asking them, could be a customer, could be some regulatory body that's asking them, we want proof of everything you say you have. So it's like, you know, I don't know if you have a Peloton. <laughs> I, have, I have a Peloton, okay? Um, this is not just me saying, yep, got a Peloton, check that off. This is somebody logging in to Doing my Peloton work. app yep. and going, Oh, look at that. Mike's working out five times a week. Good for you, Mike. Way to go. Thumbs up. So that would be the, the closest equivalent. So if they don't know where they are, that's a good way to start. If they know where they are, if they know what gaps they have, um, then great. And it really goes for, you know, from the midsize all the way to the enterprise. We are seeing enterprise customers that, and sometimes they, they know even more than the SMB. They know exactly what they want to outsource. Yep. Right. I am the CTO, CISO of a billion dollar company. And We've got eight guys working in the security operations center and I turn over 50% every six months and I just, I wanna outsource my security operations. Sure. Center, right, easy, right? We had another large company that came to us and they just didn't wanna to have to deal with patching servers anymore. Yeah. Outsource patch management, right? We've got a great patch management program. So again, in the mid market, it's that overall IT orchestration remediation in the enterprise, it's what's the one or two things you don't want to do anymore? Right. Either way, we can help the customer fill those gaps. One last point I want to make is I was attending one of your uh, seminars and you mentioned 
the before and after of a ransomware attack. And I'm not trying to scare you about ransomware, even though you should be scared. If you, and let's do this before you get hit, not after, because after life gets a lot more complicated. You mentioned that if you do get hit by ransomware, mm. First of all, you have problems with insurance. Most likely you did not meet the requirements to get that insurance and that's why you got if hit you, by ransomware. If you didn't have the insurance then you're really, you're paying it, right? And that's now the insurance company is gonna come in and they're gonna say, I'm not going to insure any of your hardware. All the desktops, laptops that you have in your office, they had been infected. So we're not gonna touch that, is that right? We, we've seen that happen, yeah. There was, uh, um, there have been cases where companies have been told they have to essentially re-image or just replace major parts of their network servers because they've, they've been infected. Because the reality is that um, companies that get hit by ransomware simply get hit by ransomware again and yep. again and again. I mean, there was a company I dealt with a few years ago. I asked them if they ever had an attack. They said, yes. And then they said, actually, we were hit four times in one year um, because they just didn't find where it was. I mean, he said the good news they got very good at recovering from ransomware because they got to recover from <laughs> ransomware four times, right? They go to their backup, they knew, by the third time they were experts, right? But they still had to deal with it, right? So um, it's it's devastating. I mean, it's your, I mean, how many people remember the target breach? Yeah. Right, it is yeah. brand reputation. Uh, I remember wondering if I wanted to, you know, use my credit card to target for yep. quite a while, right after, and I wasn't even part of the breach. It's all about image. And when it comes right. to security, it truly is that a, an ounce of uh, prevention is better than a pound of cure. It couldn't be any truer anywhere else. Agreed. Michael, thank you very much for coming over. My pleasure. Thanks uh, so much for having me. We really me. appreciate it. And let's get engaged. Let's get, uh, bring us in, bring First Light, give us a call at First Light Cloud Exchange. We will uh, engage Michael and his team, and we will come and do a thorough analysis and get you secured. Thank you.